Hello, welcome to another video from Far North Bushcraft and Survival. Uh, on a video I did a while back about um, is a ferro rod worth having? A lot of people told me that a, a Bic lighter, a butane lighter, was the the ultimate survival fire lighter. I'm going to tell you why that's a bad decision. Stay with me. Okay, well I'm glad that you joined me. My name's Lonnie, and uh, here is your standard Bic lighter. Okay, now uh, in spite of what many people have said, the butane lighter does have several shortfalls. One of them is if you get it wet, it's uh, can be a bit difficult to start. There are ways of getting it started if it's wet. Uh, you need to know how to do that. Uh, another way is if it gets cold. If it gets cold, it is not going to light. You've got to get it warmed back up to light. Butane boils at a temperature of 31 degrees Fahrenheit. That's uh, just under the freezing water uh, or water freezes. Okay, that's where butane boils. In other words, that's where butane vaporizes from its liquid form. Okay, it's 16 degrees Fahrenheit here now. So this is well below its boiling point. Okay. It is not going to light. And to show you that it does have fuel in it, uh, hopefully you can see that. Right there, hopefully you can see the, the fuel level in there. It's about a third full. Okay. Well, you have to get it warmed up. <clears throat> so, I know a lot of you right now are saying, well, duh, just keep it in your pocket next to your body. That'll keep it warm. That's all you need to do. Well, that's not all you need to do. If you're in the North Country like I am, uh, hopefully you can see that it's even snowing right now. What if you fall through the ice into freezing water? Okay, you're going to come out of there. Your body's going to be cold. Your body's not going to be producing the heat that this needs to light. Okay. So that's why uh, a lighter is a bad idea to depend on. A lot of people go out with nothing but a lighter. They depend their life. Uh, they, they, they let their whole life depend on this lighter getting a fire going. Uh, trying to warm this up, I think we got it warm enough maybe that it'll work. There we go, we got flames. I hope you can see that. But like I said, you don't always have that option. You don't always have a way of keeping that lighter warm. Okay, in that video where I was speaking of the uh, the ferro rod, I said what is superior about the ferro rod is it doesn't matter how cold it is, it doesn't matter how wet it is, it will still spark just great. The wet doesn't bother at all, the cold doesn't bother at all. But uh, it does require some skill to learn how to use. Okay, you need to learn how what natural materials around you will work with a ferro rod, which natural materials won't. Uh, I know a lot of people carry uh, man-made fire starters with them, uh, such as cotton ball, uh, Vaseline-soaked cotton balls petroleum jelly soaked cotton balls. That's a great idea and I recommend that, carrying something like that with you. However, I do not recommend 
relying on that. For the same reason, I don't recommend relying on the lighter. Technology can fail on you, okay? You can, uh, you can use up your uh, Vaseline soap cotton balls. Say if you're having a tough time getting the fire started, you can use them all up and then you're in trouble if that's what you've relied on. Okay, there's, there's other options. Here is a container with matches in it. Okay. That's great if, uh, here, let me keep searching here. Well, it looks like they're all, yeah, you know, they're all uh, stormproof matches, which is your best option for matches, okay? Because uh, they'll handle the wet, they'll handle the, uh, the cold just fine. Um, they'll handle damp, okay? Uh, regular matches, as long as this is kept sealed, you'll be okay. But uh, what happens if your buddy borrows this and he doesn't get the lid tightened back up and you fall through the ice? In other words, what happens if your matches get wet? You're in trouble. What happens if you use up these uh, stormproof matches? Again, you're in trouble if that, that is what you rely on. Okay, there's also other options. These are all options I carry with me all the time. Okay, here's a magnifying glass. Uh, that'll work just great if you have solar. Well, on a day like today, we don't have solar. So, uh, well, in survival, uh, when I'm in a situation where I think uh, survival might be a possibility, in other words, when I'm going on a trip on the snow machines or the boat or, you know, I'm going on a distance trip where I need to rely on myself to get myself out uh, if something goes bad. Okay, I'll carry a, a road safety flare with me. If I uh, need to get a fire going quick, I mean like right now, uh, that safety flare is one of the best ways of doing it. Uh, but again, I don't rely on that. Uh, what if I lost everything? Uh, you know, what if I flew into a lake in a float plane and when we landed, we flipped the plane over and I was able to get out of the plane and swim to the shore uh, with everything left behind, okay? What is the best fire lighting tool out there? Well, I'm going to say something that you're probably not thinking of, and that is right here. This tool right between your ears. Okay, knowledge. <clears throat> As you noticed, I don't depend on any one thing to get a fire lighted. Uh, I light 90% of my fires with a big lighter. But I don't depend on that. I don't rely on that. Uh, if I lost everything, well, I've always got my carbon steel knife with me. If I can find me a chunk of quartz, and I can find me some chaga, which is fairly widespread here in Alaska, uh, I can get a, a fire going. Chances are I, I can get a fire going that way. If that doesn't work, what can I do? Okay. Uh, if there's no other way of getting a fire going, I can still light a fire with friction fire methods. I'm wearing a t-shirt, okay? The hem of that t-shirt can make a bowstring for uh, uh, for the cordage on a bow for a bow and drill friction fire. Uh, I'm wearing rubber boots. I don't have boot strings. Oftentimes you'll have boot strings you can use as cordage to get uh, a fire going uh, with friction fire using that as a cordage. Uh, like I say, 
This is the most important thing you can have for lighting fires. Uh, I encourage you not to rely on technology. In fact, that goes for all of, uh, all of survival. Shelters, fire, food, water. Don't rely on technology. Yes, have technology with you and use it. But learn how to do without it. Well, I hope you learned something in this video, and I hope you find it useful. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you guys on the next video. And in the meantime, you have a good week. Take care. If you enjoyed this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up and to share it, as well as subscribe so you don't miss any more. And check out these suggested videos here. Thank you.